Hello everybody! Today we will use libraries of transcription factor binding site prediction motifs from Transfac Professional, Transfac Public and from Jasper databases. And we will use them to analyze SNPs on the example of COVID-19. And we will learn that motif redundancy actually give better predictions. Watch it! Hi again, my name is Alexander Kell, and today we will talk about Transfac and how to use it uh, to analyze SNPs. And the special attention will pay to the fact of comparing Transfac Professional versus Transfac Public and versus Jasper databases. So let's have a look. As you know, in Transfac we have positional weight matrices which you, one of it you can see here, uh, which is uh, also represented by a logo. And this matrix is built by uh, collecting known sites for a given transcription factor, uh, and then counting the nucleotides in the given positions. And then using this position weight matrix, uh, we calculate a score, which is used then to predict a new potential binding sites in any regulatory regions of a gene. In case of a SNP, uh, the nucleotides are changed and accordingly the score of the binding site either drops or increases. So we get either gain or loss of the binding site. Let's consider coronavirus infection. As you know, interferon is actually uh, inhibiting coronavirus and in turn coronavirus inhibiting interferon. Uh, for instance, in the paper described that uh, different components of uh, coronavirus are actually inhibiting the whole pathway of interferon, especially the, this factor called IRF3. And it's also, for instance, confirmed in this paper uh, where it is clearly shown that uh, this IRF3 factor is inhibited by coronavirus proteins. So um, IRF3 is actually a transcription factor which is described in Transfac and as you can see it is uh, correlating and related to many diseases, especially to coronavirus infections where it is shown that on protein level and on transcription, uh, transcription level this uh, protein is uh, inhibited and actually this transcription factor in Transfac has a lot of matrices. Another important factor of coronavirus infection is vitamin D and it's uh, clearly related to severity of the disease. Uh, it is also shown in many papers that it is uh, related to the severity and um, basically uh, it is uh, related to vitamin D receptor. It was shown in the recent uh, GIVA studies that uh, the severity to coronavirus infection uh, is uh, controlled by many SNPs and one of the important SNPs is located in this gene and it's inherited from Neanderthals. And this information can be loaded from the SNP database uh, of coronavirus infection. Uh, for instance, you can see here this SNP uh, and you can, we can download this data uh, locally to our computer and we can further analyze these SNPs uh, to search for transcription factor binding sites. Let's use Transfac Professional to do that. So we log in in the uh, Transfac through our website. Here it is. And we use a, a gene explain platform uh, to uh, analyze these SNPs. First of all, let's create a folder uh, where we can put our data. So uh, we create a special uh, folder SNP COVID and we upload uh, the file with the SNPs which we just downloaded from the SNP database into the platform. So we have to define what is the type of the data. It's a, definitely a SNP data. So it is recognized and here it is. We see those SNPs in the database. So now we want to convert those uh, SNPs into a track, basically to map them to the genome. So as you can see, we defined which columns uh, correspond to the positions, uh, which genome we have to uh, use, and here it is. So we got this track, and this track is automatically mapped uh, to the genome using Genome Browser, and you can, we can put here more information uh, about the genes, about the SNPs in, from uh, SNP database. We can look uh, in, into the information about those SNPs, about the SNPs in the database. 
So um, we can do a lot. So let's have um, a look at the SNP of our interest. We Google the gene, we take uh, the ensemble number of that gene, and we put it here and jump to that gene. Okay, let's have a look at the gene and let's find the SNP of our interest. So uh, here it is. Uh, you can see this SNP has a reference allele G, which is changed into GA. So actually it's a, a short insertion, uh, as you can see uh, in the information box. Now um, we want to analyze those uh, SNPs and search for transcription factor binding sites in which are changed by those SNPs. So we take this track, we put it here, uh, then we go to the database, Transfog, professional, uh, we take the whole profile and we put it here. So that's a whole set of uh, positional weight matrices from Transfog database. Then it put a cutoff basically to see which uh, sites are changed, uh, to which uh, score of the sites to, uh, are changed. And we name the output. Now you see the results. So you see uh, those uh, sites which are affected by the SNPs. Let's have a look at uh, our SNP of our interest and see which sites are actually changed. Okay, so we see many sites which are changed and uh, most important for us, we see VDR and IRF3, which are changed here. And we can put this information on genome browser and clearly see those sites which are uh, changed, either, either gained or lost due to the SNP. And we can also see the score change. So basically it's a huge change of the score. So in summary, using Transfac Professional, we analyzed uh, this SNP and found IRF3 and VDR sites, which are changed due to this SNP. Okay, let's have a look at Transfac Public. So we go to generegulation.com, uh, where you can find uh, the Transfac Public database, uh, and we can uh, basically load it into the uh, platform. In the platform, now we have this database. So we put again the, our SNPs. Uh, now we take Transfac Public database and take the uh, library of matrices from Transfac Public. So we take this library and put it here. We also uh, put the cutoff the same as before and uh, the considered um, distance of the gene. We rename the output so to differentiate it from the previous analysis and we run the analysis. Now we see the result of Transfac public. So let's have a look at the SNP of our interest. Uh, you can see uh, the output is very small. We found just two binding sites which are changed, but no RF3 and no VDR. And reasonably, there is no RF3 matrix in Transfac public and no VDR matrix actually in Transfac public. Let's consider Jasper database. So we go to the Jasper website and download the uh, library of um, Jasper, put it into Transfac, and now we are going to use it uh, in the same program to analyze the SNPs. So we put the track, we put the library from Jasper, we put the same cutoff, the same genes, and we change the output to differentiate. So right here are the results. So what we see here, uh, quite many sites. Let's have a look at the SNP of our interest. Um, yeah, so uh, you see quite a big output. So reasonably, uh, Jasper found many sites and we see VDR, but no RF3. Uh, and it's clear there is only one matrix for RF3 in Jasper database. But if you look in Transfac, as I already mentioned, there are many uh, positional weight matrices documented in Transfac Professional, uh, which were taken from uh, different papers. Uh, I mentioned 11 uh, positional weight matrices, and basically one of it, this one, which was able to find IRF3 binding sites changed by this SNP. If we have a look at this matrix, we can see uh, that this matrix is actually uh, built by our team and it is built on the basis of information taken from a paper uh, related to SARS coronavirus infection. That is why possibly this matrix actually worked. So in summary, 
we can show that when we analyze this SNP, which is very important as a risk factor for severe COVID-19, using TransFact Professional, we found changes in two very important transcription factor binding sites, VDR and IRF3. Although when we use TransFact Public, we cannot identify either of them. Jasper was okay by predicting VDR binding sites, but we miss IRF3 using Jasper. And the reason is because it has got just one matrix, which is not enough to cover many potential situations in genome. In TransFact, we have nine or even 11 different matrices for IRF3. One of them, which was built by our efforts using information from binding sites of IRF3 acting in various coronavirus infections. So such matrix was more effective to detect the IRF3 binding sites, which is affected by the considered SNP correlated with uh, COVID-19 severity. Thank you very much for your attention and stay connected.